make us define ourselves narrowly or as part of some kind of monolithic structure, usually which doesn't exist or which is much more complicated than it appears. Um, I'm just kind of rambling now, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, based on stuff you said earlier, as an Orthodox Jew who, who wears a yarmulke, has a beard, you know, wears the seat seat, the fringes down to my knees, perhaps I, I create a lot of anxiety for many secular Jews that I interview, because all the time I'm, I hear from many completely secular Jews, I'm a proud Jew, and the only people who ever say that to me are people who are Jewishly ignorant. Like, no one with any background in Jewish text or, you know, anything substantial ever says to me, I'm a proud Jew. Only people who are ignorant say, I'm a proud Jew. Interesting. So it's, so it's a defensive kind of statement? Yeah, yeah. And Like, you can't um, take away from me, I'm, I'm, I'm proud and I'm... Yeah. Like, that's interesting. Um, yeah. I wonder if they like, view themselves as ignorant or if they view themselves as well-versed in some other element of a tradition that you might not uh, see as, you know, sort of central. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, almost nobody views themselves as ignorant, so I'm sure <laughs> you're right. right. Well, yeah, I do. <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, like, I mean, I mean, you know, clearly, you know, there, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a body of, of writings that is, you know, central to, to your tradition. Um, but, you know, for instance, what if I was to say, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant of scripture, I'm ignorant, I haven't read the Talmud, I don't go to synagogue, but I've read every book written by a Jewish author published in the last 150 years. What kind of, you know, where would that fall in the scope of knowledgeable or ignorant? Or is it irrelevant? Not that I'm saying I've done that, but... No, 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 I, I hear what you're saying, and... Um... Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it as a question mark. Um, I mean, that's certainly a formidable grounding of knowledge in, in things Jewish, to, to, you know, read so much by Jewish authors. Uh, I mean, that's, that's formidable. But it, it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, have you ever been to a baseball game in the Bay Area? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like uh, the San Francisco Giants game, they often yell, Dodgers suck, Dodgers suck. That never happens in L.A. <laughs> right. And I've never heard anyone say I'm I'm proud to be a heterosexual. Right. <laughs> um so it's people who who feel judged who say I'm a proud Jew, I'm a proud gay, I'm a proud black. So what does that mean? So so what you're saying is that it's 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 coming from a feeling of persecution or marginalization? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking out loud. Yeah. It's saying something because like People who are secure in their identity don't say, I'm proud, whatever it is. But mm -hmm. people who, who, for whatever reason, are feeling insecure in their identity, such as gay or black or Jewish. You know, I, I guess that's true, but I think, I think the, 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 the natural next question I would think would be to ask where that insecurity comes from, right? I mean, look at the black power movement of the 70s, which was really largely about a, a reaffirmation, a reclaiming of you know, a, a, a standard of beauty that was, that would valorize blackness. Um, you know, the great anthems of that movement largely are things like Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud by James Brown. Um, so I think, you know, I think the question would be, where does that necessity of, of declaring yourself proud and affirming your identity come from? Well, the, it, there's a need. I mean, like, I don't... I feel zero need to say I'm a proud heterosexual because I've not, you know, 90% of the population is not uh, gay. It's the other way around. So people who are saying that, it comes from a, a very strong need, right? Yeah. Now, I think the unique thing about the situation you're talking about in terms of secular Jews is who they're saying it to, right? Yes, yes. Um, that's the, I think that it, of these examples, that's the only situation, you know, Dodgers, Giants, heterosexual, homosexual, black, white, right? These are all sort of groups that are, that are, that the, you know, that, that, that are, are, are clearly divided, not groups that the outside world tends to lump together, right? So right. the notion of a sort of, of a, of a, you know, an intra, 
mural discussion among Jews where, where that kind of statement needs to be made, I think is, is, is interesting and in some ways unique, in other ways not, because, you know, there's a discussion in the black community about who's black enough and what the appropriate, uh, you know, forms of, of, you know, what the criteria should be. You know, like, is Barack Obama black enough? Um, but I think, you know, I think ultimately those, those conversations are pretty divisive, you know. Um, certainly in the black community, um, the idea of, of having to qualify and quantify why it is that you were black enough um, is something that most people are trying to kind of eliminate, right? Like, let's, let's get away from that. Um, and I wonder, you know, I wonder about the relevance of that conversation in the Jewish community. Um, it seems ironic that, you know, amidst all the anxiety about dwindling numbers and the survival of, of the culture and the religion, that there should be this move to, you know, um, grade everybody and tell people who might feel Jewish that they're not Jewish enough, you know? Well, yeah, let me throw an opinion at you and, and get, get your response if you care to. Um, as a convert to Judaism, when I look at Jewish history, the rigorous always went out. Like it was Moses imposing his rigorous will on the, the rebellious 12 tribes. It was the rigorous Maccabees triumphing over the assimilating Hellenistic Jews. It was the, the Jews of the Talmud and the, and the Pharisees who, who survived the destruction of the temple. And and in, in in America today, it's the Orthodox Jews who are not assimilating, while the rest uh, are on a path towards assimilating. So I think that's why it's like it's built into the very Jewish DNA. This 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 constant challenge: Are you Jewish enough? What do you think? Um, that's interesting. I mean, I don't know that. I mean the, the 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 last piece of your example, the 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 Orthodox versus the assembling. I don't I don't know how much. Of, I'll, I'll, I would have to ask you sort of how how you see that as paralleling these other moments in history that you highlighted. Um, is it just a is it? Well, the <clears throat> I mean, there's a midrash. I'm not so sure if it's factually real that most Jews did not leave Egypt with Moses 3,200 years ago. That you know, most stayed behind. But anyway, it was like Moses who, who you know, formed the 12 tribes into a nation. And now in America today, I mean, intermarriage rate among Orthodox Jews is virtually zero. Um, uh, among the rest of Jews, it's uh, you know, at least 50%. Um, like Jews who have been to Israel, I mean, uh, say Orthodox Jews under 18, like uh, you know, at least 50% have been to Israel. Um, Non-Orthodox Jews, it's like 10%. Um, so, like by any measure, concrete measure of commitment to to a Jewish identity, the, the Orthodox are overwhelmingly stronger uh, than the non-Orthodox. And so, the Orthodox aren't going to assimilate. Like, there's no question that in 500 years there are still going to be Orthodox Jews. What is not at all clear is whether there will be conservative Judaism, Reform Judaism, or even modern orthodoxy in another few hundred years. Like, there will definitely be Satmar Hasidim, you know, in a thousand years. It's not at all clear that there will be Reform Jews in a thousand years. Huh. That's interesting. Um, I mean, I, you know, certainly that fear has been around. You know, I, I, I grew up hearing that, that, that the expression, you know, show me three generations of Reform Jews, right? Right, right. Sort of the, that's sort of the, 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 the shorthand formulation of that fear. Yes. And, you know, I can show you at least three generations in my family, <laughs> if not four yes. or five. Um, but, uh, I, I mean, I, I guess, I, I, you know, I think, I think certainly everything you're saying makes sense. I guess one question I would have would be, you know, you said, you said something like by every, uh, by every definable measure of... Right, right. I guess I'm wondering what, if anything, I mean, what, what would be the sort of... If you were to sort of try to think up the most sort of out of the box measures that you could, that you might not even think make any sense, what would they be? I mean, clearly things like intermarriage um, or 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 visiting Israel are are very you know make make a lot of traditional sense as barometers. But are there any others? And if so, what would they be? Or or what would what would be some that you know you you might want to being literate in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I think that's a huge one. Okay. Um, but what, I, what, what, I mean, what, what would be some really wacky ones? 